Hello, my name is Trey Harding, Identity SC for the Southeast here at CyberArk. Today, we will walk through the Workforce Password Management feature that allows for credentials to be stored in the CyberArk Cloud or in the on-prem vault for CorePass customers. With this feature, admins can store the credentials for shared accounts via the admin portal, and end users can store credentials via the user portal or CyberArk Identity Browser extension. And we will walk through these steps in this demo. CyberArk Identity provides a simplified interface for business users that can manage their credentials securely and seamlessly single sign-on into those business applications. With this feature, users are no longer required to remember their app passwords or use non-enterprise solutions like LastPass to manage their credentials. On the screen here, we see the admin portal, and the first flow that we'll walk through is the setup of a shared account for the marketing team, which will be a Twitter account. So this is an account that users share in order to access and post on the company's behalf. And right now inside of the admin portal, we see a dashboard that can give you some information about what's going on inside the tenant, such as the active users, what type of applications were launched and such. But in order to start the configuration of the corporate Twitter account for the shared accounts and within the admin portal, we'll go down to web apps. We have a lot of different web apps already deployed, but we'll click Add Web Apps. We know we want to add the Twitter account, so we'll type in Twitter. We'll click Add. We'll click Yes. And now we're ready to start configuration. So from here, we'll go to Description, and we'll say Corporate Twitter. And you can also add an application description as well. Since this is an out-of-the-box application already serviced through CyberArk Identity, we already have some logos and category stuff here, so no need to modify anything else here. But when it comes to permissions, we actually want to add permissions here. And you can add permissions via users, roles, or groups, even AD groups. And this is for Active Directory and Cloud, CyberArk's Cloud Directory as well. We'll click Add here. And again, we can search by users, groups, and roles. In this case, we already have a role for the marketing team. And we'll actually click that. We'll click Add. If we go to Policy, we also have some, some conditional rules that can be applied about how to access this application. Or we could even em employ some step-up MFA in front of this application here via an authentication profile. So we have a lot of different authentication profiles here, including a step-up MFA profile. Um, but in this case, we just want the users to single sign-on right into this corporate Twitter account. But where we do the account mapping is here. And since this is a shared account, we actually want to select this radio button for all users share one name. So if we select this, we enter in the username, we enter in the password. And then we also have the option to allow these shared credentials to be visible to the users within the marketing team in this scenario. But in this case, we do not want these users to know what this shared credential is. But it is an option and something that you can configure if you would like to do that. You could also enable workflow for this application if you would like for there to be an approval process for users to gain access to this application. So if we select this box and then we click add to, to start the approver list. And at this point, we can either have the approver be the requester's manager, or we can specify a specific user or role um, within this workflow. Um, but in this scenario, we do not want to employ a workflow and we'll uncheck this box. And at this point, we're ready to deploy this shared Twitter account. So if we go back to web apps, and then I open up another window and another browser. Um, we're actually going to log in as a member of the marketing team. And this is where we'll start to look at how to access that shared account. And we'll also look at how this end user can add an app via the user portal and via the browser extension, which is also called Land and Catch. So on the right, I have a, a screen share of my phone. So we'll actually see us authenticate into the user portal via QR code authentication. So in this scenario, I'll click CyberArk Identity. And in order to enforce passwordless authentication, we can use QR code authentication via this application. 
So if I click the QR code authenticator, I'm now presented with a biometric challenge. Um, and this is based on the abilities native to your device. So if I tap, tap the touch ID, I'm now presented with a camera and I can scan this QR code. And now I'm inside of my user portal. And in this scenario, you can also see the applications that I have access to with the main one here being the corporate Twitter account that I just set up as an admin. So if I want to access this corporate Twitter account, I just select the corporate Twitter. And now it signs me directly into the corporate Twitter account. And if you look on the right on my phone as well, I could also access that corporate Twitter account from my phone as well. And the other way, and we'll see this later as well, is we can actually utilize the browser extension to access this application as well. But in this scenario, I have an application that I'd like to add myself. I'm part of the marketing team and I have access to the UPS account because we like to ship out some, some items to our customers. So if I go to add apps here, and I type in UPS, I click add, I click, yes, I want to add this application. I'll select close. And now I'm prompted to enter in the credentials for this UPS account. So if I type this in here, the username, I'll click save. And now the username and password is saved. And at this point I can log right into my UPS account. It's pre-populating the credentials. And now I'm, I'm signed in to, to my UPS account. So that's one of the two ways that an end user can add an account themselves. But the other way that I may want to um, set up an application is via land and catch, and that's via the browser extension. So again, I'm a part of a marketing team, and as a part of my duties, I have access to a LinkedIn account. So I'll select a new tab, I'll type in LinkedIn, I'll type in the email and the credentials as well. And I'll click sign in. And at this point, this is where the land and catch feature asks if I want to add this site to my user portal. And in this case, I would like to do that. So I'll modify the name here. I'll click yes. If I log out of LinkedIn and go back to the user portal, I'll actually reload my rights here and I'll actually refresh the browser extension as well to capture this application. Um, now you can see the LinkedIn is here. So now we've added an app in three different ways with the corporate Twitter being added by an admin, the UPS application being added by me as an end user via the user portal, and then the LinkedIn account that we have here that we added via the land and catch features. So now we can access LinkedIn via the browser extension directly. Search for LinkedIn in the browser extension, click, click LinkedIn. In the similar way that we saw with UPS, the browser extension logs me directly in to LinkedIn from the browser extension. Another way that we can access LinkedIn is directly from the LinkedIn site. So instead of going to the portal to access LinkedIn, we can go directly to the LinkedIn site. We could then click this icon here, um, select the credentials that we would like to use. We could also check this auto login box so that anytime we select this icon, it'll automatically pre-populate these credentials, but in this case, we'll select the credentials that we'd like to use and select go. And at that point, it signs me right on into this LinkedIn site directly from LinkedIn via the browser extension. And actually, if I bring my phone back up and refresh that as well, we can see that UPS shows up, say that I'm on my mobile device and want to access this account directly from my mobile device. I can click UPS. And now I'm inside of UPS as my, 
my user as well. So there's multiple different ways that these end users can access um, these applications and, and, and use these credentials. Now there is one other thing that I would like to show with the browser extension is that we, it actually has the capability to generate secure passwords. And this is what it will allow users to be more security conscious and, and generate secure passwords for some of these applications such as the UPS account or their LinkedIn account or even the corporate Twitter account. Um, and you can customize the password to your liking um, based on the password length, um, whether you want uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers, symbols. Um, it just needs to match what the downstream application will allow you to, to have as far as passwords go. But one thing that I would like to show you as well is the ability for how you can actually see these passwords. So um, if you remember when we, when we set up the corporate Twitter account, we did not allow for users to see what the password is. So I'm the marketing user. And if I click this icon here for application settings, you can see that I don't get prompted to view any credentials. However, since I have a LinkedIn and UPS account that I added myself, I can click that same application settings go down to user identity and here I could select and view this password since these are applications that I added myself. So just wanted to show you the different type of ways that you can configure this such that you can either see passwords or even not see passwords if they're shared account passwords. That concludes the demo for workforce password management. Thank you for your time.